Well, take a deep breath. The hard work is done. Hopefully it'll be fun from here on out. If you are at this point, then your main pages are written, you have a stash of images, your domain is live, and you have WordPress installed. And you can see it. If you have that theme ready, get that installed and all the associated or required plugins. Now it's just a matter of plugging all that content you have written into those pages, a little bit of formatting to clean it all up and making it look pretty. You got this. But first, there's a couple little housekeeping things we need to do to make WordPress work the way it should. Your menu bar is on the top left of the admin site. I will call out the menu items, then the submenu item, and that's where you should go to make these designated changes. Let's start with settings general. Your site title should be what you entered earlier. It should be the same or close to your domain name, but no matter what, it must have your number one keyword in it. The tagline can be just about anything. Most themes don't use it, but put in your number two and your number three keywords just in case. URLs should be the same as your domain name. Set your time zone correctly, pick a date and time format that works for you, save. Now go to settings reading. For home page displays, choose a static page. For home page, choose the page you want to be your home page. Posts page does not matter at this point. Save. Finally, permalinks. Under common settings, please tick post name and save that. Now head over to pages and find the page that you chose to be your home page. It should have a great text next to it that says front page. Choose edit. Now enter your home page text you wrote earlier into that form box. Add the images to spice it up. This process should be very easy for you because it's already done. Just highlight your text, click control C to copy it, move it over to the edit box and click control V. Boom, your text is in there. WordPress is a WYSIWYG editor. So what you see is what you get. Above the text box on the left are various text formatting tools that you may need. And there is a toolbar toggle for even more tools. On the upper right, you can see a switch between visual and WYSIWYG or text editing. Text is great if you know coding and want to insert straight code and not have WordPress format it. You will also see an option that says add media above the text box. This is how we add images. Click it and off we go to the media library. Adding images is as easy as drag and drop. Just drop in a new image and it uploads exactly where it should, no mess and no hassle. Once the image is uploaded, there are a few options down the right side we need to mess with. It is generally considered a good practice to give every image a title and an alt text. The alt text is used by Google when measuring what your page is about, so using your keywords here will give you a little boost. We also have alignment settings here. These are important for getting your image to lay out properly. Your alignment is basically just like aligning text, left, right, or centered. You can link your image to nothing, the same image in a larger size, or something else. For instance, if you happen to make a graphic image that says, click here to book now, and you want that to link to your book now page, you can set this up here. Finally, we have a drop down to choose the size of the image inserted. WordPress auto resizes all your images, so you always use the optimum size for each use. This helps your page load faster, even if it is image heavy. If you have a layout assistant like WP Bakery, you have a lot more options, but it's a lot more involved too. Keep in mind other layouts you have seen when checking out other sites, and do your best to move your content around to make it as appealing as you can. A layout tool like WP Bakery adds a lot more options to what you can do. You can add image carousels, calendars, animated buttons, make images that fly in and out, all kinds of super cool stuff. While it's a bit intimidating to start off with, if you had to hand code these effects, you'd be dying. Again, like Photoshop, with great power comes a giant learning curve. If you want a flashy, modern, looking interactive website, WP Bakery, or something like it is a must. Also look for special layout features that may be built into your theme. Use those. If you want to make interesting and individual layouts, use any method you can to make it look cool. 
When I edit, I like to have another window open so I can save the page periodically in one window and check it in the other. I refresh that browser, make sure that I haven't broken anything and that it looks the way I want it to. This will save your bacon, trust me. Do it periodically. All themes act differently for different effects. Read their instructions or handbooks or contact their technical support if you have problems. But the bottom line is you are just cutting the text you previously wrote and pasting it into the page and then saving it. With a new website, we're probably only looking at three or four pages, so it should be fairly simple. You'll want a home page, a contact us page, and an about us page. Maybe a what we do page. Now let's get to the menus. Go to appearance, menus. If there are multiple menus in your theme, make sure the correct one is selected. There may be options such as a main menu, a side menu, and things like that. Make sure you're on the main menu. In the main screen, you should see the available pages to the left and a graphic representation of them in the main viewer. You can grab menu items from the left and move them over and move them around and change the order that they're in. It's all very, very easy. If you don't want an item there, just delete it. It's only deleted from the menu, not fully deleted. Some themes have sliders. These vary, so consult with your theme documentation. Many themes also have customizable footers, information that is at the bottom of every page. Most of these are edited in appearances, widgets. Here you may see sidebars, social sharing, and footer widgets, and other options. All themes vary, but it's generally from here that you can update your footers, and usually you'll find them labeled footer. Sometimes they will have column numbers too. If there's multiple columns, it may be footer one, footer two, footer three, footer four. Good luck. This part may get a little frustrating. Even for me, each theme is different and there are no set rules. Trial and error may be what rules here, but just take it slow. Email their technical support. Most things do tend to work out logically, even if you don't understand the logic at first. But once it clicks in for you, additional edits will be much faster and easier. Again, experiment. Try. It's okay to fail. You can always go back, roll back the edits if it doesn't work. Try new things, experiment. Sometimes kismet happens and something magic happens when you make a mistake. No matter what, know that it's just going to be fun. Make a page that's just for experimenting if you want to too. No one will ever see it and you can just have fun there. But the bottom line is just have fun and see what you can do to express yourself and make your page work for you.